the uh, railroad was cleaning out the cut out there. Willis Goldschmidt, who died in February at the age of 81, was much more than a source of information. He had done something in his life that we would all like to do in one way or another, leave something behind. They dumped it here, and that gave us all this space right where we're standing. Of course, all where the parking lot is, that's all later. That's in the 70s. He was one of a handful of people, train and streetcar enthusiasts, who started in the 1940s what would become St. Louis County's Transportation Museum. How that all got started was a story we told in the year 2000 in a program called Locomotive. And of course, people told us, you really need to talk to Willis. Today's Museum of Transportation, part of the St. Louis County Parks Department, started back in the 1940s when a few rail enthusiasts decided they wanted to start collecting old streetcars and trains whose time they realized was nearing an end. A lot of the old and even new trains were being lost because of the wartime demand for scrap metal. After World War II ended, the slashing came from steam locomotives and streetcars. 47 was a a hard year for taking streetcar lines off in St. Louis. And that's why we, we thought we had to save some of them. And of course these other people who were interested in regular railroads got in with us too. That's the only way you could do it, is to unite. The St. Louis group was led by Dr. John and Mary Roberts, and it started with a single piece of equipment. Willis Goldschmidt was there too, and 50 years later, he still was. Public Service had that horse-drawn streetcar, Bell Fountain number three, and uh, they didn't know what to do with it. The, the uh, Missouri Historical Society didn't want it at the time, so Doc Roberts thought, well, that'll be our first exhibit. So the public service company gave it to us. More streetcars and train engines followed. This isn't the kind of collection you can put in somebody's garage, and the collectors were able to lease some land in St. Louis County from the Union Pacific Railroad at Barrett Station. The museum not only got land, but got a bit of railroad history in the deal. An 1851 tunnel, one of the first railroad tunnels west of the Mississippi. For a time, the Roberts lived at the museum grounds in an old train car, and through the 1940s and 50s, the collection grew. But saving this stuff from the cutting torch was just the start of the battle that is still going on. Deterioration, rotten wood, steel. Mother Nature takes care of steel and aluminum both. You gotta keep, keep after them if you wanna keep them looking good and structurally sound. Some of it maybe eventually we'll have to part with, who knows. Like I said, there were periods where it was so slow you didn't know where the next dollar was gonna come from. Lots of guys bought the paint themselves. I did. <laughs> Uh, never a shortage, though, I guess, of uh, train enthusiasts. Oh, no. He had plenty of advice, and we had a hard cord that always came out. For years, this seemed more storage yard than park. School and scout groups came, and special events could draw an occasional crowd. But it took a long time and a lot more money before this evolved from a clubhouse for train buffs to an open-air museum with a much wider public appeal. They tried to do more, but uh, they just couldn't get the interest that they needed for some reason. I think that really changed in the middle 70s, when we had some more people get interested who were not railroad people, but who helped out a lot. We had a good board in the 70s, and then, of course, in 1979, when St. Louis County took over, it changed again, for the better. <laughs> Over the years, more structures have been built to protect the collection from the elements, and the landscaping and parking are more welcoming. Other things, though, haven't changed. Kids are still coming for a chance to climb on board a real train. And in the workshops, where the visitors don't go, you will still find the heart of this institution. A dedicated group of volunteers carefully restoring an old St. Louis streetcar and rebuilding part of an old steam locomotive. Okay, leave it. 
wasn't for the train guys, or a lot of the volunteers, they couldn't do it. You got some experts in the streetcars and auto automobiles, got guys help on that, and the steam fellas. Uh, that takes a lot of dedication to work on that steam engine. For years, Willis Goldschmidt had been involved in the archives and library at the Transportation Museum, taking care of the records and photos and films that had been collected over the years, putting things in order for those who would carry on what he helped get started. Because, I, I hate to say it, but eventually some of you guys will be gone. That's, and some of the people who started, obviously, are gone. We admit gone. that. Yeah. There's about three of us left now, maybe four. Does that worry you that... Not really. Not really. We've got some good people now. The, the library is in good hands. Right. And you're training the next generation of uh, volunteers? We hope so. <laughs> if they want to come out and volunteer and train, that's fine with us. <laughs>